Here's the thing about bringing clean beauty products to the market. If you're doing the real work, it's really, really hard. And as we've said for years, clean beauty is not just about banning ingredients. Our most recent journey into forever chemicals, which include PFOS and fluorinated compounds, has shown us just how hard this work is. In the spirit of transparency, we want to bring you along in this journey, just like we've done on child labor in the mica industry, heavy metals and color cosmetics, and phthalates in manufacturing equipment. We're speaking to some experts in the field to get their input. PFAS is the acronym for per and polyfluorinated alkyl substances and covers a vast class of synthetic chemicals widely used in consumer products, in packaging, and in industrial processes. PFAS chemicals provide stain, grease, water repellency, and used in beauty products as well that are meant to be water and wear resistant, like long-lasting mascara. There is a difference between PFAS and all other fluorine. Not all fluorine is bad if the fluorine is part of a salt or a mineral, it doesn't have the same harmful impacts as PFAS, and fluorine is actually necessary for the, for the human body. So some cosmetics will contain minerals with fluorine in them, such as mica, and that's not going to have the same harmful impacts as cosmetics with actual PFAS. With time, we've appreciated uh, that exposure to PFAS make babies grow less well in the womb thereby uh, contributing to a uh, low birth weight and even setting up kids for later life obesity. There are a lot of holes in the regulatory framework and we describe the broad array of consequences for human health that cost us directly in terms of disease burden, cost the environment in terms of pollution that then has to be cleaned up. We do not formulate with fluorinated compounds. They are on our never list. We spot test for PFAS ingredients. But guess what? There's more to the story. The issue is that fluorinated compounds are also used in the beauty industry supply chain, which is very difficult to control. Think cleaners used on manufacturing equipment, undisclosed treatments on packaging and raw materials, or coatings for plastic shipping totes. PFAS chemicals even contaminate water supplies. These supply chain complexities are part of the reason we advocate for more regulation within the beauty industry. PFAS can sneak their way into products in a variety of ways, one of which is through the treatments of pigments or packaging. For high-risk products, Beauty Counter has requested in writing that all raw materials confirm that they do not use any fluorinated treatments in our products. And we ask this documentation for all of our packaging suppliers. We use testing results to improve our business and to choose new suppliers. Fluorinated compounds can also sneak into products through barrels that raw materials are sent in, early in the supply chain where brands don't have a lot of visibility or control. Talk about a wild goose hunt, right? We have tested high-risk products like mascara, foundation, lipstick, and lip gloss for PFOS, and we did not detect any we initiated independent fluorine testing of every ingredient used in select makeup products, including the packaging, so we could learn more about these potential sources. And this testing is currently underway. Fluorinated compounds are known to be highly effective cleaners and treatments in an industrial settings. So we promptly asked our manufacturing partners to confirm if they use any fluorinated cleaners, agents, or treatments anywhere in their facility. Like we have discussed with other contaminants like heavy metals, phthalates, and benzene, we believe that getting to the bottom of a clean supply chain is virtually impossible without implementing federal regulations to hold our manufacturing and raw material suppliers accountable. Beauty Counter continues to be the most outspoken brand on Capitol Hill, asking for supply chain transparency, and we support a federal bill banning PFOS ingredients. Banning PFOS ingredients is a great first step, but it's not enough. What we need is comprehensive reform. 
We value transparency because doing the real work to bring clean beauty products to the market does not start and stop with banning ingredients. Rather, it means long and painful investigations, pressuring manufacturing partners, and intentionally asking Congress to better regulate the industry. We'll update you on this progress, but in the meantime, we need your help. The beauty industry can do better. Join us in this fight.